In this Tobacco University video, we're going to answer the question, what are terpenoids and how do they relate to cannabinoids? All right, so let's get to answering the question, what are terpenoids and how do they relate to cannabinoids? So first off, terpenes versus terpenoids here. What's kind of the general comparison? And this is a great kind of difference between, for definition, structure, types, and uses. Uh, however, these are often used as interchangeable terms, but they do have different definitions. And we can see different classifications and categories. Terpenes are the naturally occurring combination of carbon and hydrogen. Terpenoids are terpenes that have been modified through a drying and curing process. Basically, that's a chemical modification. And what that does is that alters the oxygen uh, content of the compounds. So we're talking about on the molecular level there. Terpenoids are a subset of terpenes that contain additional functional groups, and these functional groups could have been added uh, to produce a desired effect, or it could be um, a naturally occurring in the drying process. So here we have the structure again, terpenes, simple hydrocarbon compound, terpenoids, hydrocarbon compound with oxygen containing functional groups. Kind of an important structural uh, difference there, as well as the other differences you see listed right here. So what are terpenes then? What are kind of like, let's look at just the, the general sense. What are um, terpenes? Because we've heard probably that term referred to quite a bit. And terpenes are organic hydrocarbons found in essential oils of plants. And cannabis terpenes are produced in the trichomes of the plant. It's what provides the unique scent. The terpene smell allows us to make inferences about the strain and possible physiological effects that it may have. We see the five most common listed here in kind of a, a standardized approach. We see a lot of wheels being used with terpenes to help, again, create a good comparison uh, in an organized format. And more of these terpenes will be described in details on other videos here on Tobacco University. So what can impact uh, terpenes just in general? Well, the reason plants develop terpenes in the first place is to attract pollinators or reject predators. Research suggests that these compounds can have uh, medical properties, so they might be important for human use. Now, what can impact them? Well, the growing environment, the growing substrate, and the time that you go through and harvest them. Now here we're seeing kind of a comparison, again, provided by a company, so take it for what it's worth, looking at um, our standard kind of lighting and then adding uh, UVA and UVB light and the alterations in terpene concentrations. And they kind of give all of the values here, and we can see the total terpene concentrations um, are particularly higher for mycin and limonene, increased by 40 to 50% with the addition of UVA and UVB light. Just one example here how just that growing environment can change the amount of terpenes produced, not to mention the substrate or the time that you select a harvest. So identified terpenes, again, this is hopefully not too confusing. It's meant to be um, a really kind of interesting way to kind of provide an organization. Uh, as there are over 100 different identified terpenes in the cannabis plant. And while the differences can be subtle, there are classification systems uh, pl in place to reduce confusion. General smell classifications, we see like the spicy and the kind of the sour um, uh, collection. We see also the um, earthy smells, the sweet smells. Again, uh, it's commonly shown on a terpene wheel to try to try to develop that organization presented. Now, I consider this to be a little bit more of an improved wheel by terpene uh, type and not smell. Classify them and to give you more information about each of them, uh, to give you the boiling points of them, the aromas, the effects, or what they're also found in, and the key medical benefits, as well as some strains that may have uh, favor that particular type of terpene. These terpene categories are an improvement method of organization over the aroma given off. It's kind of little bit of non-scientific way. Uh, this presentation also includes additional properties for each for improved comparisons to be easily made. What are the boiling points? How do they differ? What are the, what are the general aromas also included, but not the main way of organization? So how terpenes relate to cannabinoids? To get to that central question there, technically speaking, phytocannabinoids are a form of a terpenoid. They are uh, metroterpenoids, meaning they have a partial terpenoid structure. 
Much of the commercial, commercial and therapeutic value of cannabis comes from the aromatic monoterpenes, which have synergistic effect when consumed. Furthermore, the aromatic therapeutic effects of monoterpenes have been clinically shown effective. This kind of shows you the, quote, marijuana, which is your above 0.3% THC in your hemp. Uh, from a federal standpoint, what they can both produce, they both can produce cannabinoids and terpenes, different percentages, different um, combinations. Um, so again, knowing your cannabis plant and knowing what it could produce, that's how terpenes can relate to cannabinoids. They are both produced by the cannabis plant. And this brings us to the entourage effect, which is a more, there's another video on this channel that goes into this in more detail. But in general, the entourage effect describes a mechanism where cannabis substance, substances work together to optimize the overall psychoactive benefits of the plant. The idea is that you want to find the best terpenes to cannabinoid ratio possible for your desired effect. Because as we see here, all these dotted lines, all these connections, there is a web here of, of interactions, not just one thing that's uh, kind of systematically leading to another thing. There's a bunch of interactions that can occur. And understanding those interactions can create a more beneficial medicinal purpose. So this all comes back to at the very end here, the importance of testing. So not every plant in a given strain will have the same levels of terpenes due to the expression of individual plants' phenotypes as well as the growing environment. The only way to be sure is through a terpene analysis uh, from a cannabis testing laboratory. So be sure anything you're looking at purchasing, make sure you're getting these certificate of analysis. They look at slightly different. Yes, it's important to look at the terpene profile. It's important to look at the cannabinoids, but also make sure that it's passing tests for heavy metals, pesticides, um, microbiology, things like that, to ensure you're getting a clean product as well as a product that also has a particular profile that you deem desirable.